I've been kind of fascinated by input lag because that could really make or break a game. Input lag, or input latency, or input delay is the time between a button being pressed and a thing happening on screen. This metric is usually referred to in milliseconds. You'd think that a faster input means better gaming, and sometimes it does. These days, we don't really notice input lag because it's so low, but it's never zero. With modern displays, it's actually way higher than it once was with CRT displays. Those are almost instantaneous. This, uh, this right here is not a CRT. So in order for a retro game to feel its best, we want that input latency to be as low as possible. But really this applies to any type of game. I decided I wanted to start doing these tests on all my PC handheld reviews going forward. There needs to be some sort of differentiating factor between these PC handhelds because they're all kind of the same. But really, I just wanted to try out this cool new thing that I got. This here is the OSLTT, or the Open Source Latency Testing Tool. It's by a YouTuber named Tech Team GB. This device is still very much in beta. This is really meant for PC monitors, and you'd think what's going on here would translate well with PC handhelds. But it really doesn't translate that well because what we want to do is record the time it takes for a controller input to hit the built-in monitor. This unit focuses on mouse and keyboard clicks. Also, every PC handheld has a touch screen and these little screws on the back like to trigger that touch screen. So I put little furniture pads on them. This isn't really ideal because it lets the light spill into the light sensor, but I think it's it'll be fine. So we're gonna be doing three different tests on every device that we have. One of them is gonna be a monitor latency test using this OSLTT. What it does is it flashes a white screen a hundred times and gives us a readout of the results. The second test will be the controller's latency. We're gonna be using a free program called X Input Test, which has you spin the left thumbstick around as it records 1000 inputs and how long those inputs take to be received. This also gives you a millisecond readout, so this will be used to determine the input latency of the controllers built into these handhelds. The third test will be the least accurate. This camera right here that I usually use to film everything is capable of 120 frames per second recording at full 4K. So I'm gonna boot up Celeste on each device and record myself pressing the jump button 10 times. I'm only gonna do this 10 times because I have to then manually sit there and count each frame and then do math to calculate what that frame difference means in milliseconds. I actually ended up doing this around like 20 times each because I knew not every button press would be easily recognizable as a button press. Sometimes my finger would obscure the button. I had to kind of look for the shadow around the button to see when it looked depressed. At the end of all of this, I'll have a spreadsheet of all the devices that I tested and the results. If you really can't help yourself and want to be spoiled, you can just click the link in the description and look at the spreadsheet yourself and see how everything did. But if you do that, then you'll miss some interesting anecdotes about all the different devices that I tested and the testing process. And you're gonna miss me saying ass at least once. But we have to be very clear about something here. Metrics aren't everything. For example, a fan can sound louder than another fan, even if it doesn't have a higher decibel reading. It could just be more annoying, you know what I mean? The MSI Claw benchmarks better than every other device here, but it's significantly here. People went a little nutty about the Steam Deck's matte screen and how it's technically bad for an OLED screen. I think that the matte screen looks really nice, but people over on the OLED subreddit are all like, show me a metric that tells me that the OLED screen's better with the matte on it. it, it that's one of those things it just, it just looks nice. I'm sorry that your dark points aren't as dark as you'd like them to be. It just looks and feels nice. I don't know how to quantify that. A device can have all of the specs in the world and still be a shit device. And for those reasons, this channel will still mainly focus on how a device feels, what's its real world use. How well does it achieve its intended purpose? And it's for those reasons why I think that the PlayStation Portal is ass. See, there you go, there's your, there's your ass. I would highly recommend other channels like The Fox or Gamers Nexus if you want more deep dives into benchmarkings and numbers and, and stuff like that. I'm only doing this today because I think it's fun and, and interesting and I wanna do it. But before I do it, 
You're gonna have to watch me make a cup of coffee. This video is sponsored by Trade. Oh, I didn't see you there. Today we're doing a, a coffee recipe. And this one's gonna be a little nutty. <laughs> <laughs> this week's coffee that Trade sent me is Orin's Coffee from New York City. With notes of pine, green apple, and juicy acidity. I love the taste of juicy acidity. We're gonna do this with this pistachio sweet cream, and we're gonna creamify it a little more so it's a little more liquidy. You can do this with your favorite hazelnut spread too, because honestly, they kind of taste the same. Which cup is classier for this? This one? Okay, you got it, my friend. This, I, this was a, a tiramisu from, from... Chili's? Giorgino's, Giovanni's, Gio, Giuseppe's, Uncle Giuseppe. You smell that? I do. Put a little oat milk in there, like creamify it a little more, because I don't like how, it's not creamy enough. That creamy, that, that's some cream, baby. And that's our base. Trade is a coffee subscription service that allows you to try all different types of great coffee without having to look for it. Trade sources the best local roasters and brings them right to your doorstep. Trade maps your specific preferences to hundreds of different coffee flavor profiles. Their technology pairs you with the best coffees using art and science, marrying industry expertise and machine learning. Click the link below to enjoy 30% off of your first month of coffee delivered right to your door. And there you go. Oh, this is not iced. Okay, I'll just have it then. I'm allergic to nuts. We're gonna be using this Gigabyte Aorus BMF15 laptop as a baseline. I made a video on this laptop, I think exactly a year ago. I'm gonna be using an Xbox Elite controller plugged in through USB. I would imagine controllers in all these handhelds would act similarly to an Xbox controller. Xbox controllers actually have really low polling rates. This is different than input lag but it does contribute to input latency. Polling rate is the frequency at which the controller and the device you're using talk to each other. So a lot of devices can have polling rates upwards of a thousand Hertz. An Xbox controller has a polling rate of 125 Hertz for some reason. That's pretty low. I'm only including this for the sake of consistency but I hope that all of these other devices perform better than this because those have controllers built onto their boards, you know? Should, should work better. All of the monitor testing is being done without power being plugged in, ex except for the baseline laptop because I forgot to unplug it. But I'm doing it that way because most of these devices only have one USB-C port and if a device has two USB-C ports, I just left it unplugged for the sake of consistency again. These tests are also being done at max TDP. So the devices that we're testing here are the Asus ROG Ally, the Lenovo Legion Go, the MSI Claw, the Aya Neo Flip DS, and the Steam Deck OLED Edition. I'll walk you through some of the complications that I had running these tests. For example, the Steam Deck is Linux, so the monitor test using the OSLTT just didn't work. I tried what I could. I was able to run the OSLTT software on the Steam Deck using Proton, but it wouldn't recognize the device, which runs on Arduino. Maybe, maybe that's something that could be fixed in the future, but I have to leave the monitor test out for the Steam Deck for now. We also couldn't test the display on the MSI Claw because that runs on Intel Arc, and Intel Arc has issues with DirectX, which is what the OSLTT uses to flash the white screen. It, it got all weird. It, it wouldn't flash right. I tried a couple of different things, but I couldn't get that to work. But we were able to do the Celeste test on both of these devices. And we were also able to get the X input control latency test done on these. I was able to get that running on the Steam Deck, which is Linux, using Proton, and that worked just fine. I was able to run it in SteamOS mode too. I guess we could show that first. In terms of just straight controller input latency, the Lenovo Legion Go kind of crushed it. The Steam Deck beat it in terms of average controller latency, but only slightly. The Steam Deck had an average of 2.09 milliseconds, whereas the Lenovo Legion Go had an average of 2.13. So they're very close. But if we look at the graph, you can see that the Lenovo's is more consistent. The Steam Dex is kind of all over the place. These are both still extremely low though, so good for them. I suspect that the Steam Deck achieved this through some sort of Linux tomfoolery. 
I don't know how the hell Lenovo achieved this. The MSI Claw and the Asus ROG Ally are both remarkably close and remarkably consistent. This is admirable in its own right, still pretty decent. The Ioneo Flip DS is pretty bad. It has worse input latency than even our baseline with a USB Xbox controller. I think we can expect some pretty bad results from Aya Neo here. But don't go out and buy a console just based off of its controller input latency, because that means nothing if the monitor also has some pretty terrible input latency. And as you can imagine, the Aya Neo Flip has pretty terrible input latency on the monitor too. These are the results using the OSLTT device. The Aya Neo didn't record the entire test for some reason, but also while I was running the test, the display would flash for way longer than it did on other devices. So I'm not sure how accurate this is for the Aya Neo Flip DS. However, the Lenovo Legion Go performed a little better, but not by much. And I think the reason that they both performed pretty similarly on this test is because the Lenovo Legion Go and the Aya Neo Flip DS are both native portrait displays. That means that they draw their image from top to bottom and not left to right like most displays do. These displays I think are meant for like large tablets and not gaming handhelds. So these two performed worse than even our baseline laptop, which has a pretty decent display in it. The RG Ally performed great, and I would suspect the Steam Deck would probably do pretty good in this test too if we could have tested it. But that's why we did the slow-mo test too. So this is me playing a game on each device and counting the frames. This is the least accurate test because one frame equals around 8.33 milliseconds. So that's a pretty wide margin to account for. This is really just to support our other findings and to fill in some blanks. Like for example, if we can't do the monitor test on that device, we can use this test to compensate. Shockingly, the MSI claw kind of crushed it here. It makes me really want to try that monitor test on it. Hopefully I can get that sorted out eventually. Everything else kind of performed similarly with the Aya Neo Flip and the Lenovo Legion Go sitting towards the slow end. The Gigabyte laptop also didn't do too hot, which goes to show you how important controller latency is. I'm also a little disappointed in the Steam Deck here, but with data this close together, I would only really be concerned if there were major swings. So the real takeaways here on this particular test is that the MSI Claw is kind of nutty in some weird ways and native portrait displays are still ass. There you go, there's your second one. Third one? Overall, Aya Neo can hold a massive L here. I can't help but think that their input latency issues can be attributed to their constant release cycle. That leaves them no time to polish their products before shipping them. Lenovo needs to share their secret sauce. Why is their controller latency so great? And the rest just kind of supports what we already know. The ROG Ally is great. The MSI Claw is very similar to the Ally, but has some wacky quirks. And the Steam Deck is also great. I just wish that I could use the OSLTT on it. Keep in mind, the Steam Deck is the cheapest device on this list. And from what I could test, it performed pretty close to those other expensive ones. So what do you guys think about all these input latency tests? Here's another little fun little anecdote. I almost couldn't do the X input test on the MSI Claw because uh, my brother Will was using it. And for whatever reason, the left stick just stopped working on him. And that's, I need that for that test. Oh, so we fixed it. You can watch the Wolf Den podcast over on that YouTube channel for, for, for more. MSI Claw tomfoolery. Let me know what your experience has been with any of these different handhelds and if it reflects what we saw in this testing. If you'd like to see anything different in the future, maybe I can make this easier on myself somehow. Leave in the comments below, at me on Twitter, any and all this other social media garbage. Thank you, Trade, for giving me coffee and helping sponsor this video. Don't forget to check them out at the link in the description. We're over on twitch.tv slash wolfden all of the time. This weekend, I will be messing around with the MiU the new one, A30, and the Ambernick 28XX because I'm getting those and I'm making a video on that. So go to Twitch for that. Most important thing that you can do though, 
help support this channel, subscribe right here. I would like you to know when every single one of these videos goes live, thank you very much. And share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe has one of these and would like to know how it stacks up. Thank you very much. Have yourself a very good week.